I'll just wait a few minutes to see if anybody turns up. I know quite a few people are away on holiday at the moment. Um, so I'll just say hello to Bridie. You'll be back in the cold country very soon, I suppose. Um, so yeah, mock-up sewing today. So over there is my woven pinifer. I did give it a mention on my Instagram chat the other day there, but I thought I'll get it on Doris um, so you can see what it is all about. Um, so you have got Iona up. So you have got a woven pinafer here, and I've got wooden buttons in there as well. The straps, and you turn it around, and that is the back side of her. And there's the centre seam. That's your panel. Okay. When if anybody turns up in a moment, I will grab the camera and I will bring it over so you can have a proper look and you'll be able to see where the se seams are. So there is actually two at the front and back. There is actually one, two, three, and four attached pieces. And then you do the exact same on the front and then you sew them together um, down the sides, obviously, and attach on the straps. So forgive this poor old pinafore. It's been thrown on top of cupboards, inside a wardrobe, hung over the backs of chairs, and she she's seen her day i really need to make another one or just fix her probably the best option because i do wear this in the winter months because it is a woolen dress after all and as i always do when i'm weaving i've plied it with linen um and there's loads of different colors in there and it's got sari silk through here sari silk bamboo yarn or banana yarn through here um so yeah hold on a sec while i just kick animals out the room Go on, go, go. I do apologise, the cat's trying to come in. So, with that in mind, I'll just uh, tidy her up a little bit. So, I'll grab the camera now and you can have a look and you'll be able to see exactly what it is that you are going to be achieving with your weaving okay so i shall pop you off uh move the camera around because you don't want to see my triple chins okay so can you see there is the seam that sews both uh, the panels together the two thin panels that i had for my dress okay so like when you're doing your weaving at the moment it's what it's panels so this is one full panel here so from here to the side is one cut length of the actual woven panel that we do, whether it's 17 feet long, 18 feet long, 19 feet long, whatever, depending on what pattern you're doing, because obviously they've all got different recommendations for the length of fabric you need to create. And then in there as well, on the offcuts, on the patterns that shows you um, to cut out your, your belts, your pockets, your collars, that sort of thing. So that is off that one panel that's left and the way that she cuts around. So it would have probably come from this section here um, on the pattern cloth. I have to find out the pattern. I'll have to look it out. So then I'll just turn her around a little bit. So here, I can't remember the name of these. Sarah did mention it to me because she says, oh, I can't see. I think they're called the gauntlets or something like that. Um, but can you see here, there's a, just about make it out, there's a seam all the way down here. But then there's this triangular section here. Excuse the state of it. She really does need sewing again. So that connects to there. And on the opposite side, the exact same thing. You can see that seam. You can see that seam all the way down there. So those two pieces get sewn on first to this main panel here and then you stitch them together. And it's the exact same thing on the reverse. So here's your second long panel from seam to round the side. Okay. And then there's your third panel there from the seam to the side. Okay. So there's obviously the allowance for your arms there and all the way down to the triangular section that I have to make. And then I'll just, Doris, behave yourself, lady. And then this is your fourth panel. So again, attached there with the triangular section to make an A-shaped dress. Just gives you a bit more maneuverability. And there's your centre seam. And that's it. That is 
the gist of it. So if you were to get a pattern, you could technically apply that method to cutting out a pattern that you've got at home. But you want to do a couple of these first just to practice, okay? So on a minute, I've got to turn you around. Oh, excuse my hands. So there we go. So two of you here, give us a, a wave or a shout out so I know who it's here, because um, I might have missed it. So there we go. So what I'm doing now, I have a pamphlet here. So it is the way you weave in, making a mock-up for your hand-woven garment. Now, if you're doing a mock-up at home, which in hindsight I should have done, but I didn't have enough fabric and I didn't have what I'm about to suggest. If you're using an old bed sheet, make sure it's a cotton bed sheet or a cotton duvet that you're using because there isn't a stretch in it like you get with a polyester, um, like a half and half, like a polyester cotton bed sheet. Um, you can still get some sort of nylons. I think, I'm wondering if flannel, I wonder if a, flat, a cotton flannel sheet might be a good alternative. If not, get yourself some calico. It's cheap. You can buy quite a few meters of it for about a tenner. Um, I get mine from Amazon, but it's from a supplier that uses Amazon um, as a selling site. So it is coming from an independent supplier down in the UK. I think it was Brighton it comes from that I get mine from. If I could figure out where the actual company is, then I would actually buy directly from them. But this calico, you saw me all, you saw me all cutting it out a couple of weeks ago on the video as well as the other month. So. I cut out two pieces of each so two pieces of back two pieces of front so I've just stitched together the back panels or oh, I'm wrong side this way I've just stitched together just a quick long run stitch all the way through on the sewing machine so I've just sewn the two panels for the back okay and before I even Iona stop it before I even started to put the seam, uh, the arm in, I've done the shoulder seam on one panel, adding the front panel to it. I haven't sewn it together down the side yet. I've added my sleeve in next, which is a little bit tricky. So what you need to do, and what you need to remember, is to do your, slip, you know, your, your little snips, especially when you've got your sewing curves together. It just makes it a little bit easier to control the way that you need that item to curve. So on there, you can see where I've done these little snips all the way along. Okay, there we go. So that's what I'm gonna do with you in a bit, but I'm gonna read out what Sarah Howard advises. And then we've got a lovely connection. So if I was just to put this on now, the way it is, where's the front and back? Okay, there's the front and the back. So and sleeve is there put the shoulder up there and all I need to do once I've sewn up the sides and look at that perfect I'm looking at it thinking this is going to be far too big for me but this is obviously the collar so that flings down like that and I'm thinking oh that's that's going to really annoy me but that's the point of doing these mock-ups so got around the back so I'll stick this on Doris for now well we have a little natter and I will put that there we go there you go Doris there's your new coat so that's it so far okay and I'm hoping that I won't have to do any adjustments to it fingers crossed so I just take a seat take a pew hue and I might have to tilt you down a little bit there we go so making your mock-up now according to Sarah Howard and I'll just read from her pamphlet Choose an inexpensive fabric to make your test garment, something like a cotton or a calico that doesn't stretch. A idea is for you too. A, select your pattern size and highlight the cutting lines, okay? So when I've done the rest of this, I can then decide whether I, next time I, I cut the fabric or if I'm cutting the fabric from a wove, my weaving, then I may decide that I really needed like that. I think that ended up being roughly about 14 to 16. Don't just hate it when somebody decides that you're bigger than what you actually are. So, that'll once I've done this, I'll be able to decide whether I think it's loose enough for me to use or do I want to make the arms a little bit longer, wider for the next size up for me to live from the bingo winks or for moving or for having a jumper on or underneath or something like that. So, um, 
B, cut these out or alternatively trace your size and cut out. So Taylor's chalk, okay? So I pinned, you seen the video that I did a couple of weeks ago or the other month, I think it was May that I did that. Um, I pinned my pattern to the two layers, the two layers of calico lay on top of each other for the ones that needed two of each, okay? So that was two, two sleeves, two fronts and two backs. So I literally just cut out the pattern while it was pinned to the fabric and I just find that so much easier and there's a one piece that was a cut on the fold which is the collar so I had to make sure that the material is folded and along there and I cut the length that I needed but not this section okay so see pin pattern pieces to a folded piece of fabric so you can cut for example two backs two fronts two sleeves the warp is on the straight grain and when you cut your hand woven fabric you will be cutting a single layer yeah remember that you're not folding it over like i can do or you can do with your bed sheet or whatever when you're cutting out your mock-up when you're cutting your actual fabric the woven panel that you've created then you will um be cutting it on the single so you will be literally what i did last time is i put it on the floor because the length of it and I put all my panels out on the um, cloth made sure that I had more than enough to be able to do what I wanted to do pinned it all in place and then I cut around I personally just find that easier and it's not just that if something happens and I've got to go and dash out or the phone goes or I've got to go and do finish off a customer's order to get it out that whatever whatever Joe you're just waffling um, then I like to be able to like I did with these when I come to using it, I know, because it says in the front of there, that that's my belt. That's my two pieces for my belt, and I know exactly what it is, and I'm not going to get confused with a piece of scrap that I've just shoved in a box. And I did the exact same thing with all those other pieces. So, personally for me, I prefer just pinning this to the, pa the pattern. So when you come back to it, because you never know what happens, these things happen, don't they? You, you get distracted. The kids come in and cause an absolute ruckus. And before you know it, it's two weeks later and you can't remember whether your front's your back or your back's your front. Or your belt's your collar. You'd be stuffed then, wouldn't you? Anyway, D. Cut out carefully, adding any markings such as darts or positions of pockets, etc. So... I don't think I've got any pockets in mine. I definitely don't remember cutting any pockets out and they weren't there when I picked the pattern up from downstairs. Yeah, I'm going to have to... I definitely don't remember cutting out any pockets. I'll have to have a double look. I might have... Well, if I've got any fabric left over, I can make the pockets then anyway. So it's not a big deal. I'm not sure if I want pockets. But then again, if I'm out walking the dog and I've got one... got this on... I like to take my walk, my, my mobile phone with me, obviously, but I like my earphones in as well, so yeah, maybe, I might have to. So, um, when you're cutting it out, you can see here, okay, it says a double layer, so that's cutting two pieces of fabric lay on top of each other to get the pattern that you're looking for. And there's the other pattern, and this one says a flange, and this one says a pocket. Okay, so that's just letting you know that those are the areas that you're going to be cutting, your pockets, your tops. Anyway, so cut out any markings such as darts and positions of pockets. There are several ways to transfer markings, including dressmaker's carbon, tailor's tracks, in other words, um, thread markings. So do a long, like a bright coloured thread. I'm using yellow for sewing this together. So a bright, like a red, a uh, bright red or a yellow or something like that. So you can see where the stitches are. And just do a really loose single running stitch. Don't put a, a, um, a slip knot or anything like that in the stitch because you just want to pull it out afterwards. But where there's places where you feel like you need to put a dart in, just do a quick running stitch through. Then you know where that position is exactly on your body that you need to make an adjustment for, even if it's like a dart line going from, from the side to your breast, just to make that a bit more comfortable and a bit more fitted if you want to create a fitted jacket. Um, or if you want the seams to come up here because maybe it's a little bit too bag, uh, big and wide and you just want to create some sort of little simple dart that will go up and then you can cover it up with a a pocket or at the back as well you can do simple 
simple darts from and usually it's from the bottom up it's not very it's not very often that you'll do a dart from the waist you either do a dart from the top or you do a dart from the bottom um anybody think uh, drop your comments or whatever in down below when you get this live and then you can let me know if you've got any hints or tips for sorting out something that feels a little bit baggy and you need to adjust that just to make it a bit more fitted for your body shape so follow the pattern construction method pinning pieces together as you go either hand based stitch using long long running stitch or machine stitch using the longest stitch and you can try it on for fit as you go along Use a one and a half centimeter or a five of a fifth of an uh, five or eight five over eight inches um, seam unless otherwise indicated pressure garment and um, sleeve hems up so you can check the finish later. Um, clip inward curves, notch outward curves, and trim corners and press seams to open. So that's before you even get any further on cutting out your weaving okay we've gone a little bit glitchy bear with us there we go back again i meant to stick my data on before i came on live so oh you'll have to excuse it flaming internet's a nightmare right so next step is to check the fit okay so try the garment on stand in front of a mirror and check for ease at your bust and hips Check the finished length of your garment and sleeve. So make sure that it's long enough and it's sitting in the position that you want it to do. For me, I want I want it to sit sort of around about here. So then I'm covered up. I don't really like it here because I'm in my 40s. I've had three kids and I've got a bit of a podge. I say it podge. I've got section scars, so I'm quite conscious about that because it's still... It still it still sticks out and nothing's flat anymore. It used to be, but it's not anymore. So, yeah, so I want to make sure. So with this here, I know for a fact that that's my waist and this is standing at my height, okay? So for me, that's going to be sitting just in the middle of my hips. And for me, I'm quite happy with the length of that. The arms we'll have a look at in a minute, but I do need to quickly hem stitch the, the sleeves on that mock-up. But I think I might just leave them the way they are um because then i've got an idea when it comes to because i won't be really i'll be hem stitching all of that afterwards when i do it on the actual fabric okay um so the next thing is check your length of your garment and your sleeves are the shoulders the right width bear in mind the armhole treatment for example sleeves and binding um do you like the neckline well now that i remembered that my collar is going to come actually fold over fold, fold over like a lapel then it's fine. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I, I don't like it. I don't, the, even this is starting to annoy me. I don't like things up around my neck unless it's my scarf. Um, and most important, do you like it and do you think it will work in your woven fabric? Is the weight right? Does it drape? Will it gather if necessary? Will the seams be too thick? Could you try overlapping them, um, taking account of the seam allowance? So um, is it the right weight? Well, You'll find out when you take the cloth off, really, is what you're looking for. I've gone with a calico because it's got a nice weight in it and it does have a lovely drape and it hangs the way I imagine my woven project in the end will finish up, okay? Um, will it gather if necessary? Well, I have the belt here, but I'm not stitched together. So, is it going to gather up lovely? Well, I suppose it is, really, isn't it? So, I mean, that's just half of it. We'll do the other half in a minute. And we'll, we'll do this little checklist, okay? So I'll write these down. So the, the checklist I want to do, once I've got this other panel on, so I want to make sure that it's the, the right length. So just do yourself a little checklist, um, and then you know where you're at. Do I like the neckline? So neckline, at the moment I'm saying yes, but we've got to put the collar on. Um, so it's a yes for now but who knows i may decide not to even bother putting the collar on i might not like it i'd rather might just want um a bias binding tape around the the actual collar itself um and most important do you like it and do you think it will work with your wooden fabric are there fastenings and pockets in the right place well i can't remember if i've got pockets on mine i don't think there would be pockets because it's got a belt on it so uh pockets so you want to check your pockets okay um what else uh, da, 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 da. 
is the weight right does it drape will it gather if necessary well it seems to be too thick so i need to know about gather with a belt so i'm going to put gather with a belt okay and will the seams be too thick could you try overlapping them and taking account of the seam lengths so if you were to do the only way my mind's thinking if you were to overlap them when you sew sewed your edges together um would you not end up with like a frayed edging on it which i mean to be fair it would give you a nice rustic look and if i was doing that then i'd want the seams to overlap sort of that direction because i think it would look silly if they were pointing you know, that way they are, that one pointing towards me i don't know it's it depends on what look you want from it i think the seams in there once they've been ironed out and flattened i think they'd be fine um as far as possible strategies are kept intact when you cut your woven fabric see the pattern layout so pattern layout so obviously it's just a, a different one from what I've got. So there's the pattern layout on your woven project, okay? So the front, does that say back? Let, all right, right front, right back, left front, right back, flanges and pockets, okay? Well, that sounds a little bit like when I did my pinafer because that's what my, um, I'm sure they were called something else, but I can't quite remember. Anyway, so that's what you're looking for okay adjust you keeping notes on what works and where need where you need to adjust oh crikey um i might decide that i want a longer belt and can i um compromise that with my cut out waving later on that's something to think about um lengthening or shortening so adjusting the pattern if the bodice is too short cut the front line and back pieces above the waist spread the pattern evenly the amount needed and tape in place um over some paper Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the little diagram. So bodice is too short, cut the front line and back pieces above the waistline, spread the pattern evenly, the amount needed, and tape in place over some paper. Well, that would be, to, you'd have to take into account the length of fabric that you've got to play with. That's my only concern with that. So, can you see that diagram? So say that was your full lot. Ignore this piece here, okay? That's your full length. She's saying, at the waist section, cut it. Get a piece of paper on your pattern and then readjust it and then sellotape it in place and then you've extended the length of the jacket or top or whatever it is that you want to make. So you would have had to have thought about that before you even started warping up your loom. Pause for thought, get your pattern, do your mock-up before you even do up your loom. That's a good idea and it's not mentioned at the beginning. Anyway, if the bodice is too long, crease above the waistline at the amount that's needed and tape in place. Now that's a simple enough. Right, okay. So here's the front, okay, and if this is too long, what she's saying is literally fold it over the length that you need to reduce it by okay can you see that just literally folded over the section here and that will give you the reducement so do that with your pattern okay fold just fold it over the inch or half an inch or maybe even will be two centimeters that you for your desired length that's simple enough to do with your pattern okay lengthen or shorten below the waistline using the same method keeping the original hemline intact so always look at the pattern, your measurements that you did for from underneath your arm to your waist here, okay? This is your waist here. From, from that bit to that bit there is where you're thinking of on your pattern as to the adjustment that you need to do. The sleeves can be lengthened or shortened between the armholes and the elbow. So the exact same principle there. Get your pattern and where your elbow would be on the jacket sleeves or the top sleeves. This is the section that you either want to cut and put an extra piece of paper around for the length that you desire to extend it by. Take that on your pattern and then you're off, okay? Again, if you want to shorten it, fold the pattern the desired length that you want to um, shorten the sleeve by. I mean, that's a th I think that's roughly about a three quarter length sleeve. So if I wanted to make it a short sleeve, then I just take the distance that I want to reduce it by and fold it there, okay? 
Note, many of my get weaving patterns show the sleeve cut sideways as this fits the fabric better. Sleeves are a bit greedy for fabric. A long sleeve has two pieces joined together. For example, a, uh, for extra length, a band can be added, knitted, braided, or inkle limbs or, or contrasting fabric. So I've been playing with the idea, depending on if I've got the right amount, <laughs> the right amount of woven cloth. I have got some heavy duty um, dark indigo denim. It's just on the other side of my desk. Um, so I've playing with the idea of using that for an adjustment or for the collar if I don't quite like the way it is and I want to make a smaller collar. More, more a, a, Japanese, a Chinese sort of thin collar is where I was thinking. Um, so if I feel I need to make any adjustments, I will use the denim because it will give it a bit more weight to it as well. It's where I'm thinking if I have to make any sacrifices. Okay. Um, where we got next adjusting and subtracting from the width so in most cases the simplest way to do this is to add or subtract from the side seams bearing in mind that any amount you adjust in the body needs to be divided between the pattern pieces for example to add five centimeters or two inches overall you need to add half an inch to each side front and back so when you're cutting out your panel oh that's not the panel this is the panel so when you're cutting this out okay add it here so on this section on both the panels for the front that small amount so that what did she say that would be oh i've lost it uh just read it then 1.25 centimeters or half an inch to all edges of your panel okay so do it on this side not this side do it on this side which is your seam side okay not the inner bit for the front especially you want to do it on your sides as far as i'm concerned don't know if anybody else is the same but i would say that that's the bit that you're more concerned about because you need it to adjust for maybe your width a little bit more around your sides um if the garment has sleeves they can be adjusted at the side seams with width of the bodice to adjust to, adjust it to match so if you need a bit more bingo wing room in your sleeves again the same amount of um, increase in the edges of your sleeves so for me there's my sleeve panel okay so that would be my cuff that is my shoulder piece so she's saying so these two pieces either side these are the bits you're going to be extending if you have to okay shoulders can be made narrower or broader by slashing the pattern front and back and lapping or spreading the pieces so from the diagram here it looks like a tiny dart there you go so that's to extend make it wider so a pattern just cut a slash through the middle of it and then add an extra piece in and this one is to reduce it okay shoulders can be made higher or lower by slashing the pattern front and back and lapping and spreading the pieces to adjust so it's saying from this section here to make um, them higher so you might you might be quite boxy more than you are rounded so you want to make the adjustments there so those adjustments are on that diagram there if you want to make it higher or lower so that's the adjustments for making it higher and that's the adjustments for making it lower so it's a matter of folding your paper and adjusting it okay if the armholes of a sleeve garment gape, a small dart can be sewn in. So that's the seam here from the shoulders. And we all know that from looking at clothes. Have a look at your clothes in your cupboards and see where darts have been put in, in places. It's always a good idea to have a look at your clothes just to get an, a rough idea where the best places are to put any type of seam adjustment in there. Keep a clear note on everything you've done so you can make the garment again without any adjustments. If you aren't going to be using your patterns soon, make sure you have written down everything with dates, references to patterns used. It's easy to forget what you did and then have to start again. I know, because I've done it myself. So have I. Okay. Um, what have we got? You can now plan your weaving with confidence or cotton sew your weaving, following the pattern instructions and the adjustments where you're weaving with pride. Okay, so she goes on to give a couple of useful books so I will try to remember to come on when this comes back on tomorrow and it's uploaded. I'll go into the descriptions and I will leave the list of books that she mentions. Useful books. 
Fast Fit Sandra ben, uh, Betzina, 2003. That's from Taunton Press. So um, Sandra Betzina, B-E-T-Z-I-N-A. The second book is Sewing for Dummies, Jan Sond Maresh, 2004. That's for, with um, Wiley Publishings Incorporated. The third book is The Complete Book of Sewing, Dorling Kindersley, 1996, DK Public Incorporated. So that's Dorling, D-O-R-L-I-N-G, Kindersley, K-I-N-D-E-R-S-L-E-Y. And then the other one is, and we all know about this one, The Great British Sewing Bee by Tessa Evley, and that's 2013 by Quadrill Publishing. So there's a couple of books for you to go and have a look, see if you can get them on Amazon. The best place to go and do your search for those books, though, is Google search. But I will remember tomorrow to put them in the descriptions so you can go and look them up yourself. And I'll give it another mention on Saturday when I'm on my live chat as well. Um, I think I think that's it. Where you weave a mock-up for your hand-woven garment is at number two in the series of booklets designed to help weavers make clothes from the hand-woven fabric. By making a pattern up... You pattern up in your spare fabric first you can see if you like it if it fits and will look the way you wish before cutting it into your hand woven fabric i make a mock-up of a new pattern and wear it for a day to see if i think i'm going to like it i love wearing clothes and i've made from my own hand woven fabric and i hope you'll be happy to do it too so there we go so i do know that Sarah made an announcement on Instagram the other week that she's going to start doing a load of little mini videos on YouTube um, to help people out because she gets a lot of repetitive questions. So she's going to be doing that soon. So keep an eye out. If you can find her on YouTube, look her up and then press for the alerts like you do with me and then you'll know when she's online. So I'm just going to tilt you down because I'm going to do... Hold on a sec. Okay, so... First of all, what am I going to do next? I'm going to just snip. Iona, stop it. I'm just going to snip around the arc of my sleeve. It just makes it easier for when I pin it to the rest of the jacket. So I'm going to just do this first. If you've got any questions, just pop them in. I don't know who I've got with me today. It's really hard doing live chats and no one talks to you. I do apologise. It'd be really great if someone could just drop me in a comment every so often. Then I don't feel like I'm just stood here like a batty old lady talking to myself. <laughs> the whole point of doing lives is so you can ask me questions. <laughs> or even throw suggestions at me, it'd be nice. Right, so what we got? So I'm just moving up book out of the way. Move. This up so I'm just trying to adjust this so you can actually see what I'm doing and I think I've got about about 20 minutes left of my time before I go off and do something else so I know what I've got to do I've got body clubs to get on with right so sleeve and the back so what I want to do is get my garment turn it inside out make sure all my sleeve all my bits and pieces are done now I don't generally, I'm quite a, um, a, free, a free sewer, so I generally do everything by um, just holding it in place. So what I'm doing now, there is my shoulder seam, so I'm just going to stitch that together in place. Can I move my sewing machine over a little bit? Let me see. I don't want to drag, drag my sewing machine in flaming extension. There we go, my extension will move. There we go, let me see. So I'm just going to sew this. Make sure my edges are... If you want to pin it together, you pin it together. That's fine. I I don't. I don't pin a lot of my stuff together. I'm quite a freehand sewer. So there we go. So that is about a centimetre from the hem. I'm not going to do a not stitch because I might want to pull it apart later on that's that done so the next bit is to now attach my sleeve this is the tricky bit 
this is definitely the tricky bit it, it just takes a bit of patience okay so we've got you lined up so you can see what i'm doing so i want to find the center of my sleeve which is actually here so if i just put it on the fold then you can see i've got my center okay and i want to just line that up on a minute just double, yeah there it is line that up with the hemline that's already there i can adjust it anyway once i've got it all in place and move my pins back down a little bit so my sewing machine needle can get past and then i'm literally just going to go along the hem make sure that my curve section is in line with the sleeve insert here so push that down there another one there and ideally it should meet the side join in a sec but i can adjust that in a minute there we go just about there i may need to adjust that in a second once i've done the other side and then we'll know where we're at there we go so that is hem lined or hem stitching stitching it pinned into place joe find your words lady find your words it's because i'm talking to myself you see so i'm just just going to make sure that they're lined up together with my little chicken pins oh. another line up there just hold that in place and then there it's exactly on cue oh, at the seam edge which is where you really want it to be and I don't think there's any need for any adjustments can you see i've pinned all along there so now i'm just going to quickly grab my sewing machine again okay and oh no, i want to go yeah go this way joe again the sewing machine now put your foot down it's holding on to it okay so if you put your foot down make sure as you go along just take your time if you're hand sewing it's fine but you will end up with creases folding up in the back of the fabric so you just as you're going along just give them a gentle tug behind so that you know you're not going to stitch in any creases okay so i'm just going to go and stop and then adjust my fabric make sure there's no creases behind or on the top and go now I've got a needle about to get stuck on my foot, so I'm just going to pull that back a minute. There we go. And adjust. Make sure there's no creases underneath. Just take your time, there's no rush. And again, because I'm starting to come to the arc of the sleeve. And it is a little bit like sewing a straight line, but you're just allowing for a bit of a curve. So you just need to readjust your fabric every so often. So I can just try and get that lifted up there. Readjust your fabric every so often as you, as you can see where the curve's starting to bend. To make sure that I've got no creases in this, I'll give that a little tug underneath. There we go. It generally just sews along anyway. It's just a matter of guiding it. On oh, a minute, I can feel a crease there. There we go. Take that out of the way. And there we go. That's that one done in place. And then take my pins out see there we go so that no mate there we go sewn on the shoulder piece into position okay so i'm just going to take the pins out and then we're going to have a look see what it's like on doris before i slow slow sew up the sides and the arms in one go feels at work today i could really do it with a cup of tea 
Okay, so there is my sleeve. I've managed to avoid any gathers. And do you know what I've just realised? I've sewn the sleeve inside out. Dozy, dozy woman. So I'll probably have to unpick this and have another go later on. Do you know, I've just made a point of saying, make sure that your sleeve's on the right side of your flaming fabric and that your seams are on the inside, not the outside. And what does Joe go and do? So is the seam. Look. And there's the... In anyway, I'll sort that out in a minute. Toasty flaming cow. Right, so Doris. There we go. So that is on there. There's the sleeves in place. Okay, so this has got to be sewn up the sides anyway, but that is the general idea. Okay, so the next bit to do now is to sew the sides up and the sleeves, which are doing one go anyway, on this side as well. So, the sleeves and the side. So I'll get on with that now. Sorry, I'm not going to unpick this sleeve. <laughs> Do you know, Joe's such a know-it-all. I'm not really. <laughs> Couldn't have done that if I tried. Honest to goodness, you can't take me nowhere. <laughs> So I'm not going to bother hemming up the sleeve section because then I'll be able to find out whether it's going to be the right size for me or not in the length. And I can make the adjustments there. I might decide that I want to add on the denim that I was talking about just to elongate my um, my cuff. Because I do like a foldy back cuff, especially on a shirt or something like that. I just think it finishes it off. So if I do an open cuff, you know where you can fold it back and you end up with like a bit like a bird's wing sort of thing. So I'm just going to sew up the arms. Just coming to now the side section, so I just want to stop. Here's my side section, so I've just sewn up the arm, the underside of the arm, and now I'm going to make sure I've got all my creases out of the way, straighten out my fabric on top and below, and I can literally just go over, and I will double, go back a bit, just to strengthen that armpit section, okay? Straighten up my fabric, which it is, and off I go. I'm just straighten this bit up here. I think it's just the way it's been cut. And go. Straighten it up as I go. There we go. That one continuous seam from the edge of the sleeve through the armpit section and the side. So I'm going to do that again on the other one and then we should just about be ready for me to try it on to see what it looks like. So once again, I am a free I am a free stitcher loves. So you feel free to pin your things together. Not a problem. I've just been on and off a sewing machine since I was about 13 years old and I just sometimes feel it so much quicker if I just freestyle it. Right, what's going on? My needle needs to come up. Okay, stop it. So a quick back stitch and make sure my sleeves are in line. Okay, and I'm off. And I actually think I'm stood. Yes, I was. I was stood on my fabric then. Right, so I just want to make sure that my seams are matching up. Can you see that there? I want my seams to be lay on top of each other. 
as I go. And now I'm going to get ready to go over the top. And do you know, I've just realised again, I'm sewing this the wrong way around. But do you know what? It doesn't really matter. I've gone past the point of no return. And go back a stitch just to strengthen that armpit section out. Straighten out the fabric. Pause just to make sure that it's still aligned underneath. that'll do it's only a mock-up the end of the day we just want to get the gist to see whether it's actually going to fit me or not which is the whole point really so I'm now going to have a go oh there's plenty of wiggle room under there for um, a cardigan if I want or a jumper in the winter so once it's crossed over and I've got that belt across here because this, I mean, you could hang that down even lower if you wanted to, like that, and have it like that. And then it's going to have a belt around it, which I don't even have any belts around here to even have a tent to look at. No, none at all. So, yeah, and I like the length of the sleeves, but if I'm talking winter, then I definitely want to make myself a cuff. So, when it comes to doing my my adjustments right so my adjustments I want to now measure the distance that I want to I like this bit there's plenty of room in there not too big and baggy underneath that I feel like I'm going to be restricted so I'm quite happy with that and it's sitting not too bad on my shoulders I'd have probably have gone with a little bit higher up in my shoulders but really I want to wear this all year round so I've got to take into account that I'm going to have a cardigan on at some point or a jumper on at some point when I take in the garden, I just want to fling, because that's what I do, I'm a, I'm a flinger on her. I just grab something, fling it on, and I'm off. So, this has got plenty of room in giving it, and then, if you're wearing an item that's actually woolen, you don't want it clinging to your skin anyway, do you? Because you just get over hot, so, and the whole point with wool, when you're wearing it, it traps the air, and it makes you warmer as well. So, for talking sake, now, tape measure the second I just grab one I want to cut out a piece of fabric when I do the next adjustment do my adjustments on this I want to cut a piece of fabric so if that's where it is on my arm I want to ideally there we go one there's I want to add at least another four inches to that and that's what I'm going to use the denim for so if I cut eight inches fold it over sew around the edges um, on the reverse flip it out point out the corners or even round off the corners even but not sew them together attach them to the end of my woven fabric at a later date which i'll actually do that with this and i will show it on saturday when i do my live chat so if i do that and maybe undo these stitches and do it the right way around do the attachment that I want to do then when it cuts so I can see what it's going to look like because I can flip them back I don't want them too long I mean because four inches oh, four inches is there so that's going back up to my elbow so it might look a little bit silly maybe go with if I went with three inches three inches sits round about there on my arm with a cardigan underneath and then flip it over or jump her over then I can flip the sleeves I'll have to have a look when my fabric once I've got my fabric and start cutting to see if I've got any adjustments to make a longer length on my fabric I think that's where I'm gonna have to go so when I do the pattern I will have to do that paper adjustment by cutting it at the elbow and extending it I think in at least another inch then that would allow me to have three inches for a cuff that I can just flip back I don't want to sew it, I want it open over. You know when you, you turn the cuffs up on your sleeve and you've got that sort of open, sort of nice look. The old 19s, late 80s, early 90s look with your shirt and your Levi's and your pumps on and you've got your sleeve that's just flicked over. I like that. Call me dated, I don't care. So, 
There we go. So that's that adjustment. Those sleeves are done. I need, I need, to, <laughs> I need to sort this out and do it the right way around. And I won't look so much of a moron. So I think what I'll do is I will do the collar, the adjustment on the sleeves, sew the belt, and then on Saturday I'll come back up into the workshop um, on my live chat for Instagram and I will show you what it is that I did on my amendments. Next week, I won't be doing a live next week. Um, we've got scaffolding guys coming next Wednesday. Fingers crossed they're supposed to be. It's supposed to come the day before I get my new windows fitted. So they will be making a ruckus and a lot of noise. So I don't want to do my video chat, um, YouTube chat, while, while they're messing around and at the window and I'm waving to them and the dog going loopy. So I will not be here. I know my, my videos have been a bit... Um, all over the place lately but we've had lots of projects that we've had to get done in the house Phil had a week off the other week the week before that or a couple of weeks before that I was really poorly um, so yeah so I know you might have noticed we've got the dog's got a sofa so we're doing bits and pieces in here I've brought the island up for my workroom now so I can do my sewing up here as well um, and my scheme winding and my batty clubs the other side but this is my side for doing bits and pieces and I can get back into doing my, my jewellery making from the charms and things like that which I think might be in bike clubs in August and I will start putting in my little um, copper handmade copper clay um, charms and silver charms as my little extras don't think I'll be going with anybody that's got um, independence I might do now and again if I haven't got the time to do my own jewellery stuff but I've got that coming new supplies for that because everything all dried out I've not done it for a couple of years so I'll be doing those um, and I just wanted a workstation where I could have a day off from doing any type of fluffing and we're up here so I'll just give you a quick look before I go so a sec so this is what the workroom's looking like at the moment excuse me still boxy everywhere it's been an absolute nightmare there's the dog lip the back of the wall's got it painted and I've, I've finished off painting the tops because I can get in there now my warping frame my dangly ball and we have now got the old kitchen island is upstairs so it's got my cake winder and all my fluff up there and all my bats all my private stuff all my stashaways and then my sewing machine sits underneath there now instead of downstairs and then i've got all my fabric underneath which needs all organizing and sorting and then we end up in the work area which is an absolute diabolical bomb site at the moment so do bear with me I've got a jumbo carder coming tomorrow so my little carder will be only getting used for um, processing fleeces because it doesn't have to take its mick and that over there is a breed study that I'm going to film this afternoon and it is the grey faced dartmoor if you're interested so watch out for that it will be getting uploaded um, some point today I'm going to sit there I need to go down and get a drink because my throat is burning Oh, hold on. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, my throat's burning for far too much. So there we go. So that's what we'll do. So I won't be here next week. What I will do, and if that's all right with everybody, um, I might do a video because it might take too long. I might do the video of me cutting out my fabric. If you think that wouldn't be better, um, then let me know and I can upload that before we do the live chat. So if anybody's got any questions or queries, you can ask me them then, but I won't sew it up until we're all together when I do a live chat. So you talk in a couple of weeks and then I've got my bathroom getting sorted out two weeks on Monday. It's supposed to be next week, but I forgot. So, <laughs> so two weeks Monday, so I should have my bathroom sorted out by then. So I'll try and fix it in between then. So if I'll do a video when I'm cutting out the fabric on the woven cloth. Um, no YouTube chat next week, but I should be around next Saturday. Yeah, I will be on Instagram. I'll be around this Saturday on Instagram as well, but next Wednesday, no live chat. Watch out for the breed study video that will be getting uploaded this afternoon once I get that filmed. Um, so, yeah, I'll still be wearing the same clothes as I'm wearing today because it's filmed on the same day. So you take care of yourselves. Uh, Batty Clubs, I will do the filming for that and fingers crossed that should be uploaded for next Wednesday. If you miss me for not having a chat, you'll have a fixer Joe anyway. 
um, but come and join over on instagram for a chat on a saturday i'm always around ask me any questions i will sort that catastrophe out on the stitching but i like the way it's sitting what do you think leave a comment down below don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and the little bell gives you alerts when i've uploaded new videos and then once all this work and everything's sorted out my videos will start coming back to a bit more regular content until august because i've got a fair to go to so it'll be a bit of a chaos but we'll get there in the end so any questions or comments or suggestions um even hints and tips of things that you may i might not have covered in doing this mock-up just drop them below. I'll answer everybody anyway. So take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye.